In this le lesson, we're going to talk about how to solve linear and absolute value inequality. So we're going to first start by reviewing interval notation, talking about in particular set builder notation, graphical representations of these different intervals. So if I look at this first example, I see that with set builder notation that x is the set of any values that are in between A and B. So if I were to try to graph that, what would that look like? Well, I'd have those two values, A and B, on the graph. And since it's just less than and not less than or equal to, they would be open circles. They would not include those endpoints. But X could be anything in between A and B. So how would I represent that as an interval? The open interval from A to B. Now, what's the difference between this and the next example? Well, the difference between this and the next example is the or equal to on the left. So x could be any number that is greater than or equal to a, so I'm going to include that endpoint, or less than b, and less than b, rather. So I'm not going to include that endpoint. Notice the or equal to here, which includes that endpoint, but just less than. So what would that look like? Closed, A, open, B. Now in the next example, well, the only difference between this and the first one is that X is less than or equal to B and greater than A. So again, I'm looking at A and B on the number line, open at A, closed at B, and every value in between. So as an interval, that would be open A and closed at B. In number four, it's or equal to for each of these inequalities. So how would that change graphically? Well, I would include both endpoints and X could be any number in between. So closed A, closed B in interval form. Now in the next one, it's saying that X is any number that is greater than A. So I can rewrite this set builder notation with the x on the left-hand side of the inequality. That might make it a little bit easier to graph. So I'm looking for a on the number line, and x can be any number that is greater than a. So graphically, that's what it would look like. As an interval, a would be the smallest value, but not included, so open to infinity, and we always have an open interval for infinity. Now, what's the difference between that one and the next one? This one is an or equal to. Again, if I want to rewrite the set builder notation with the x on the left side of the inequality, it would look like this. I would be closed at a, and again, x could be any number greater than or equal to it. So it would be closed at a to infinity open. In the next example, I see x is less than b. So I go to B, open interval, and I'm shading all values that are less than B. So as an interval, that would be negative infinity, again, always open for infinity, to B, open, because it doesn't include that endpoint. But in the next one, it is or equal to. So again, I have B, but I'm going to include B, but X could be any number that is less than B. So negative infinity to B closed because we include B. Now, what if I say your solution set <coughs> is all numbers on the number line? The all set of real numbers. What would you shade? The whole number line. How would you represent that as an interval? Negative infinity to infinity. What if I said, all right, well, what about the null set? What if my next example is the null set? Well, uh, how would I represent that? It would be either the null set or the empty set. Again, never put the null set inside the empty set. What would I shade? Nothing. What interval? Nothing. So again, if I don't include the endpoints, it's open, and you would use open parentheses. If I do include the end, that would either be less than or greater than. 
If I do include the endpoint, then it would be closed, and that would be implied or equal to for the inequality. So let's take a look at a few And this was from the previous page. So again, no interval, no graph. Um, if I want to find the intersection or the union, so again, we have to be able to tell the difference between whether we're dealing with intersection or whether we're dealing with union. So if you see this, you need to be able to recognize that this is the union of two sets. So that is or. So typically we see two different pieces of the solution set in this instance. It's not other always other possibilities, but you know, the, in general, this is what we're looking at. So first I wanna graph the left interval, the first interval. So I'm gonna go from negative three to four. So I don't include the endpoint, so I'm going from negative three to four. That is the first interval. So I'm gonna draw that on the first one, the first graph. Now, the second one, the second set that I'm taking the union with is gonna go from three to seven. So I've, notice how I've aligned these. So that is the second set. Now, if I'm looking at the union, the union is the everything. So it could be in one set or it could be in the other set. So what does the union look like? Well, it's gonna, and I'm gonna put the solution set on the last graph and I'm just showing you all three to see how you arrive at the solution set. So I could be in the first set or I could be anywhere up to seven and be in the union of the two sets. So this is my solution set. This last one is my solution set. It's the result of taking the union of each of these sets together. So how would I represent that? Well, X is going to be in the interval from negative three to seven open. So that's my solution set. X could be any number in between here to be the union of those two sets. Now, if I look at the next one, is that union or is it intersection? Well, that upside down U is intersection. So you need to be able to recognize that. And what am I doing with those two sets? I'm looking at all values that are in both. So that's only what is shared and is only what they have in common. So again, let's look at the first one. The first set we said is from negative three to four, open interval, so that's this. The second set is three to seven, and that's this set, not including the endpoints. So what is the intersection? What do they have in common? Well, three is in the first set, but not in the second set. And then four is not in the first set, it's only in the second set. So my solution set is only what is in both sets. They have to be in both. So X can be any number from the open interval three to four. Let's look at the next example. The next example, I'm looking at this set. So it's negative three, not including negative three, up to four, but including four, because that's closed, okay? Now, the second set is from three to seven, including three, not including seven. Now, is this intersection or union? Oops, this is union. So if this is union, this is or, so it can be one or the other set. So what does the solution set look like? Well, it could be anywhere in these, either of these two sets. So it's gonna be from negative three open to seven open. So my solution set, my value of X could be anything in the open interval from negative three to seven. Now let's look at the next one. 
And again, you don't really have to graph all three, but sometimes I find it helpful to graph all three with the last graph being the solution set. Open three, closed at four is the first one. Closed three, open seven is the second set. And am I looking at the intersection or the union? I'm looking at the intersection. So the solution set would only be what is in both. So if I have to be in both, well, I could be at three, because that's in both, all the way up to four, that's in both. So my solution set are all X's in the closed interval from three to four. Okay, let's keep going. The next one goes from negative infinity to four. Ne negative infinity to four. So I'm gonna be here up to four, oops, up to four, including four, because it's closed, and everything that is less than that. My second set looks like what? It is closed at three, and everything greater than three. So that's my second set. Now, is this union or intersection? Well, that's a little u. It is union, which means or. It can be in either set. So what does my solution set look like? Well, it's the entire number line. The solution set is the entire number line. So x can be anywhere on the number line. It's all real numbers. Okay, let's look at the next one. The next one is up to negative, up to four and including four and everything less than that. Second set is going to be from three, including three to infinity. And is this intersection or union? This is intersection. So what values are in both? They have to be in both, in this set and in this set. It is only going to be 3 to 4, including the endpoints. So the solution set is just any element that's in the closed set 3 to 4. So let's talk about how, now that we've reviewed that, how we're going to solve linear inequalities. So let's say that we have a, B, and C that are just elements in the real numbers. They're just elements in the reals. A, B, and C are real numbers. I also know that A is less than B. Well, there's three properties that hold true for solving linear inequalities. I'm going to start off with this A is less than B. So A is less than B. Well, the addition property of inequality says that if I add a real number C to both sides of the inequality, that inequality remains true. So I, I'm just saying A is less than B, and then I'm adding the same value to both sides, and the left-hand side is still less than the right-hand side. Now. The positive multiplication property of inequality. Again, let's start with A is less than B. If I have a value C that is positive, so this is true for a value C, a real number that is positive. If I multiply the left-hand side and the right-hand side by C, the inequality still holds. And this is true for C that is positive valued, okay? Now, if I'm looking at a C that is negative, then look what happens to the inequality. If I multiply both sides of the inequality by a negative number, what happens is the inequality changes direction. So what does that mean? If I multiply both sides or divide both sides by a negative number you have to change the direction of the inequality so that's the one key thing you have to keep in mind when solving linear inequalities 
Okay, looking at the first example, I wanna solve for x and I wanna graph the solution on the number line. Then we're gonna represent it using interval notation and then set builder notation. Okay, so if I'm solving for x, what might be the first step? Well, the first step, let's say, would be to subtract five from both sides, okay? That's gonna give me two x is less than 12. If I wanna solve for x, I'm gonna divide both sides by two, and that's gonna give me the solution set x is less than six. So as an inequality, that is our solution set. So you're gonna to have to be careful on a quiz or a test to see how I want the answer represented. This would be as an inequality. If I wanted you to graph it as well, well, I like to personally see zero on the number line and then one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have an open point at six because I'm not including it, but X could be anything less than six. So that would be the graph. Now, if I wanted to write the solution set as an interval, negative infinity to six, but not including six. So open interval here. As set builder notation, x could be any number such that, and then I'm just gonna put that little inequality right there. So I can do that. Now let's look at the next one. I'm solving for x, so what might I have to do? Well, divide both sides by negative five. Dividing by a negative five. So we have to keep in mind the negative multiplication property of inequalities. So my solution set would be x is greater than or equal to negative six. I'm dividing by a negative, so I have to change the direction of the inequality. So again, I like to see zero on the number line, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six. What's happening at negative six? It is a closed point because it's or equal to, or x could be anything greater than negative six. So here is my solution as an inequality. Here is the graph. If I wanted to represent that as an interval, what would it be? closed at negative six to positive infinity, open. Using set builder notation, the solution set would be the set of all x's such that x is greater than or equal to negative six. So you have to be able to write your solutions in all those forms. Now, how can we recognize if an inequality has no solution or infinitely many solutions? Well, there's something interesting that you'll recognize happens when we start solving. If I'm solving for x in this first one, you may want to try to get all your x's on one side of the inequality. But notice what happens. You are going to get, oh, 0 is less than 1. Is that a true statement? Yes, it is. This is a true statement. So if you start solving your inequality and you arrive at a true statement, numerically speaking, that is going to imply my solution set is any number. Any number can be substituted in for x to make a true statement. So your solution set is all real numbers. Now let's look at the next example. In this case, if I try solving for x, Notice what's happening. I get zero is greater than one. That is a false statement. So as soon as you get a contradiction, then you know you have no solution. So X is, can be nothing. Null set, empty set, no solution.
Now, now. there's something called compound inequalities, compound or extended inequalities. And that's when you have the combination of two inequalities. So here you've been given two inequalities, and what do you have? You have the intersection of the two solution sets. So my solution is gonna be the intersection of the two sets when I solve each of these. So let's go ahead and solve each of these. If I'm looking at the first inequality, I would subtract one from both sides. That is going to give me negative 4 is less than 2x. Continuing to solve for x, I would divide both sides by 2, and my solution set would be negative 2 is less than x. Or if you want to write it with the x on the left, x is greater than negative 2. Now, let's go ahead and solve the other inequality. Solving for x. 2x is less than or equal to 2, divide both sides by 2, and the solution set for this inequality is x is less than or equal to 1. Now remember, this is intersection, so the solution set is going to be any value greater than negative 2 and at the same time less than or equal to 1. That is your solution set. As an interval, what would it look like? Negative 2, open, closed, 1. So this is my extended inequality. I mean, my compound inequality solution set. If I wanted to write it combined as an extended inequality, I can combine these. So as an extended inequality, I would represent this as negative 2 is less than x is less than or equal to 1. So there is how I would write it as an extended inequality. And I can do that. Now let's look at the next example. The next example, I'm solving for x. I already have an extended inequality. So I can solve it by doing the same thing to each part of this extended inequality. So what would this give me? This would give me negative 4 is less than 2x is less than or equal to 2. Still solving for x, I would then divide everything by 2, every piece of this extended inequality, which would give me negative 2 is less than x is less than or equal to 1. So again, this is the extended inequality. If I were to graph this, I would go from negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and I would be open at negative 2, closed at 1, and I would shade everything in between. Again, I'd get the same interval. So this is really the same problem, just two different ways to write it. Now let's look at the next one. The, the next, next example. example. Okay, now looking at this example, let's go ahead and start solving for x. So I'm going to have subtract 1, subtract 1. Okay, so that is going to give me negative 4 is less than 2x, and 2x is less than or equal to 2. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 2, divide both sides by 2, so that's going to give me negative 2 is less than x, and x is less than or equal to 1. Now, what am I looking at? I am looking at or. So what is or? Or is the union. And if it helps you to rewrite with the x on the left, that is fine. So now let's graph each of them. I have x is greater than negative 2. So that's this. The second solution set here is x is less than, so this is negative 1, this is 1, closed going this direction. So what is my solution set? What is shaded? The entire number line. So the solution set is all real numbers. 
from negative infinity to positive infinity. It is the entire number line. Everything is shaded. Now, looking at the next example, let's go ahead and continue to solve for x. Now, this is an extended inequality. So negative one minus subtract 1 from each component. That is going to give me uh, negative 4 is less than negative 2x is less than or equal to 2. Continuing to solve for x, oops, that is going to divide by negative, ooh, dividing by a negative 2. So what should that prompt you to do? That should prompt you to change the direction of the inequalities, right? Because I'm dividing by a negative. So there I have it. Now, I'll tell you, we never write it, an extended inequality like this, unless we have less than, because otherwise this, this makes no sense. So we don't write it in this order. We also can never have these going different directions. If those inequalities are facing different directions, you cannot write it as an extended inequality. So I'm going to rewrite it in proper form using less than. So these two are equivalent right? But this would be the appropriate way to write this extended inequality. Now, if I were graphing this on the number line, what would this look like? Well, I'm going to be closed at negative 1, open at 2, I like to see 0, and I'm going to shade everything in between. So how would I write this as an interval? Negative 1 closed to 2 open. Now, what happens when we're solving absolute value inequalities in one direction? Well, we've already talked about the meaning behind the geometric graphical representation of absolute value being a distance. So we're going to go through the same process. The only difference is now we are going to have less than or greater than or equal to. So now I'm looking at distances between two values on the number line, but I'm shading either what's less than that distance away or greater than that distance away. So if I'm looking at less than a certain distance away, it would gonna, it's going to be a little interval like this. If it's greater than the distance away, it's going to point in opposite directions. So let's take a few, look at a few examples. Again, keeping in mind absolute value, we have two cases. When the input is positive or zero and when the input is negative. We have to keep in mind that we're taking the opposite, right, uh, of a negative input. So this walks you through the two cases algebraically, how to solve them, but we're going to go ahead and do our few examples. So. If I'm looking at it being less than, if it's less than, you can rewrite it like this as an extended inequality. Less than is how I like to remember. If it's greater than, it is an or, so you would split it into two pieces. That's kind of how I remember it. So if I'm looking at the absolute value of x being greater than or equal to three, remember we're going to zero on the number line and I'm going three units away in either direction. So I'm going three this way and I'm going three this way, away from zero. So I'm at three and negative three. Oops, three. Now, if I'm looking at all values that are greater or, or equal to three units away, then what is greater than three or equal to three units away? Well, that's three units away from zero. And these are all values that are greater than, more than three units away from zero. This is three units away from zero. And these are all values greater than three units away from zero in the other direction. So what would that solution set look like? Negative infinity to negative three closed. This is union grade or, and then closed to th at three to positive infinity open. Now, what if I'm looking at all 
values that are less than three units away. So again, I'm starting at zero. I'm going three units this way, three units that way. And I'm looking at all values that are less than three units away from zero. So starting at zero, this is three units away, up to three, but not including. This is three units away in the either, dire either direction, up to three units, but not including. So what would my solution set be here? Negative three to three, both open. Now let's look at the next example. Remember, this is like x minus a. So we would really look at this as x minus a negative two is greater than three. So where am I on the number line? I'm starting at a, which is negative two. And what distance am I going? I'm going to three, three units away in either direction. So that's negative two plus three, which is one, negative two minus three, which is negative five. And I have to be greater than three units away. So greater than three units away, I would start here, that's more than three units away. I would start here, that's more than three units away. How would I represent that solution set? Oops negative infinity to negative five, union one to infinity, both open. That's my solution set. Now let's look at another example. In this case, again, I'm looking at x minus a, so that's x minus a negative two is less than or equal to three, the absolute value. So I'm starting at negative two, and I'm going three units this way, three units this way, but I'm looking at all values that are less than three units away from negative two. So if I go three units this way and three units this way, this is the solution set, including the endpoints, because it's or equal to. So this would be closed negative five to one closed. That's my solution set. Now, let's look at the next one. It's saying we're trying to find all values of x that if I were to substitute in here, it would be less than, oops, less, sorry, less than negative three units away. Now remember, absolute value means distance. Can I ever be a negative distance? No. So there is no way I can do this problem. There is no solution to this problem. I can never find a value of x that is a negative distance away. No solution. Distance can't be negative. So even if I try to do this and say, oh, I'm going negative, uh-uh, it makes no sense. Now look at the next one. I'm trying to find values of x such that if I substitute into this absolute value expression that I'm greater than negative three. Well, we know absolute value is distance. We know this expression here is always going to be a positive value. And a positive value is always going to be greater than a negative value. So my solution set is all real numbers. No matter what value of x you choose to substitute in there, it will always be true because once I take the absolute value, it's going to be a positive number, and a positive number is always greater than a negative number. Now looking at the next one. Okay, I can do this. I could either separate this algebraically, right? I could look at this algebraically, or I could look at this graphically. It's up to you. If you want to look at it graphically, I'm at negative one-half. I'm going four units this way, four units that way, finding these two values, and then making sure that I'm shading greater than those distances away. Algebraically, how am I doing it? Okay, so in this case, I'm looking at this as x minus a half is greater than four, great or, or x minus a half is less than negative four. Solving for x, we're adding fractions, 
So I have x is greater than what? 9 halves or x is less than negative 7 halves. Greater than 9 halves, negative 7 halves. That's my solution set. Union, 9 halves to infinity. Okay, so if we look at the next example, uh, we see that we have already isolated the absolute value expression on the left-hand side of the inequality. So at this point, you are able to look at the inequality and determine if it's an and or an or statement. Is this going to be a union or an intersection? Well, we see that this is less than. So since this is less than, we know it's an and. So at the end, um, we're going to go ahead and make sure that we are including in the solution set the solution to both of these inequalities. So if I were to rewrite this, I'd have x minus 1 is less than 2.5, and I'd have x minus 1 is greater than negative 2.5. If I solve each of these inequalities separately, I can go ahead and add 1 to both sides of each of these inequalities. And what am I going to get as the solution set? x is less than 3.5 and x is greater than negative 1.5. Now, since this was a less than, we could go ahead and actually write this as an extended inequality. So the shortcut, if we had wanted to write this as an extended inequality, would be x minus 1 is less than 2.5, but x minus 1 is also, at the same time, greater than negative 2.5. So it doesn't matter whether you solve these as two separate inequalities or if you represent it as an extended inequality. Either way, you're going to get the same answer. Negative 1.5 is less than x is less than 3.5. So you can get this solution set or the same solution set by solving it independently. To graph that solution set, we would look at all values of x that are in between negative 1.5 and 3.5, not including the endpoints. And as an interval, how would we represent that? Open negative 1.5 to 3.5 open. So again, extended inequality has two separate intersections of the inequality solutions, the graphical representation and the interval notation. Now looking at the next example, we see that the absolute value expression is not isolated on the left-hand side of the inequality. So if I were to start to isolate that, the first thing you would want to do is move the 5 to the right-hand side of the inequality by adding 5 to both sides. That's going to leave you with 2 times the absolute value of x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 8. Now, if we continue to isolate the absolute value expression on the left, the next step would be to divide both sides of the inequality by 2. That would give us the absolute value of x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 4. Now, it is at this point you have isolated the absolute value expression on the left-hand side of the inequality, so I can determine if this is going to be the union or the intersection. Since this is greater than, you should be able to recognize that this is an or. So I have greater than. So if we want to split this now, we would have x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 4, or x minus 1 is less than or equal to negative 4. Continuing to solve for x in each of these inequalities, I would get as my solution set x is greater than or equal to 5, or x is less than or equal to negative 3. So, Remember, for a greater than, for a union, we're going to shade all possible solutions. So I'm looking at all values of x that are equal to 5 or greater than 5 from the first solution. And then also I would shade x is equal to negative 3 or less than negative 3. So in interval notation, it would be negative infinity to negative 3 closed, union closed, 5 to infinity. 
Now in this last example, we're gonna do the similar process. We're still trying to isolate the absolute value expression on the left-hand side of the inequality. The first step would be to add five to both sides, giving me negative two times the absolute value of x minus one is greater than or equal to eight. Now at this point, I notice that I still have to get rid of the negative two. The negative two is connected to the absolute value expression by multiplication. So the opposite operation would be to divide both sides by negative two. Now at this point, this should trigger something in you. You are dividing by a negative across the inequality. So what are you gonna have to do? Change the direction of the inequality. So that becomes a less than or equal to. I've isolated the absolute value on the left. The right-hand side simplifies to negative four. Now, at this point, you see that x is, uh, the absolute value expression is less than or equal to negative four. Now, what do we know? What should you recognize? Well, remember, absolute value is distance. Absolute value always yields a positive result. So if I'm looking at the left-hand side of this, this value will always be positive. Well, can a positive number ever be less than or equal to a negative number? No. So this is no solution. This can never happen. There will never be a value of x that you could choose when substituted into the left-hand side and take the absolute value would ever be less than a negative number.